Welcome to Nationwide Today on the network service of the NTA. I'm Elizabeth Omori. We now begin with the inauguration of the Itak Bawari Rail Project. President Muhammad Buhari is reassuring Nigerians that his administration will continue within the limits of resources to judiciously utilize the nation's commercial and industrial hubs towards boosting trade, generate wealth, and create employment opportunities for sustainable economic growth. This was while inaugurating virtually the Takbaya Jaukuta Wari Rail Line, an ancillary facility yard at the recently named Goodluck Jonathan Railway Complex, Agbo, Delta State. State House correspondent Adamo Sambo reports. Since coming to power in 2015, the Buhari administration recognized the importance of rail transportation as a vital backbone towards supporting industrialization and economic development. The Itakpe Ajakuta Wari rail line that has been in limbo for 30 years is one of those prioritized as viable routes towards achieving effective and efficient train services supporting Nigeria's trade and commerce. The railway infrastructure that I have the honor to commission today is an important link for the country's economy as a central rail line. This government has also approved to link this line further from Itapi to Abuja, thereby connecting the northern zone of the country and also extending southwards to link the Wari port. It is my high expectation that this project, a vital link of south-south geopolitical zone of the country to northern zones, would be completed during the tenure of this administration. The project the president believes will link people across the cultural divides and expand the frontiers of trade and commerce, thereby leading to better standards of living for Nigerian citizens. The president therefore enjoined all Nigerians in the transportation industry, especially the railway subsector, to sustain their support to government in its drive towards achieving other railway infrastructure projects. By the same token, I urge other sectors who will be primary beneficiary of this transportation backbone, including the iron and steel sector, stakeholders in the agricultural and mining sectors on this corridor, as well as the host communities, to protect and sustain this infrastructure and maximize the benefits that could be derived from it which is readily available at their doorsteps. This project will increase the volume of their trade and kickstart, resuscitate the iron and steel complexes. All this, I hope, will improve our industrial potentials and capacities as well as boost employment. The Itakpe Ajakuta Wari rail line is expected to account for close to 1 million passengers a year, as well as unleash approximately 3.5 million ton capacity of freight that will service all off-takers on the corridor and beyond. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. After 33 years, the Takpa Jaukuta Wari Rail Line will begin commercial operation. With the inauguration of the project by President Muhammad Buhari, it is the second standard gate rail line in Nigeria. Oinaya Kaluaka, who was at the inauguration ceremony in Agbo, Delta States, brings us an update. 
It's a scene of joy here in Agbo in Delta State as we're here at the Good Luck Jonathan's mega train station. The people of the South South are happy as well as Kogi people. As this particular rail line is said to link Kogi, Delta and Edo, this rail line, as you know, was first awarded in 1987 by past administration and was abandoned for about 33 years. This is a very important landmark achievement of the President Muhammadu Buhari led administration. While coming on board, he promised Nigerians that all important abandoned projects are going to be completed by his administration. And this commissioning ceremony, we are witnessing one of the most important transmission system that was abandoned long time ago. The people are happy. They say it is a dream come true, as they described it as a reflection of the legacy of railway modernization in Nigeria that is going to bring a lot of change to them. The people have anxiously and be, be waiting for this project to actually be commissioned. The, or the Abo people and our people at large that are excited to see the like this in history. It's a thing of joy to have a railway station here in the south-south. It's a very laudable project. The project has multiply effects on health, standard of living and revenue generation. It's going to ease transport, provide job for people, definitely uh, it is a good thing. The Itakwe Ajekuta Wari rail line was initially meant to serve as a steel producing industry, but now upgraded to a multi purpose railway line serving the public. It is a 326 kilometers line with 12 train stations and the estate of the art train stations. In six years, President Muhammad Buhari's administration has completed three mega rail line stations the Abuja Kaduna Standard Gauge Rail Line here in Itakwe Ajekuta Wari rail line and the Lagos Ibadan rail line, which will soon be inaugurated. From the Good Luck Jonathan Mega Station in Agbo Delta State, Oyinaya Kalo Oka, NCA News. And in other news, the National Assembly has reconvened and received the Petroleum Industry Bill 2020 from the executive, as both chambers promised to give it consideration. President Mohamed Buhari requested the National Assembly's approval of a fund of 148.1 billion naira to five states for federal roads contracts executed on behalf of the federal government. The president requested for the confirmation of eight nominees as chairman, executive vice chairman and members of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, two non-carrier ambassadors designate from Yobe and Niger states, six nominees as chairman, director general and members of the National Pension Commission. He also requested a confirmation of eight justices of the Court of Appeal as justice of Supreme Court of Nigeria. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives is to regazette the Water Bill 2020. Now, the former military president, General Ibrahim Babangida, and his counterpart, General Abdul Salam Abubakar, have commended the resilience of Nigerians for remaining indivisible after 60 years of independence. The elder statesman gave the applause in separate media sessions at the hilltop residences in Mina, Niger State. Fatima Usman has details. Military leaders General Ibrahim Babangida and General Abdul Salami Abubakar say the country still maintains her position in the Committee of Nations and not doing badly compared to other developing nations around the globe. A little bit of constitutional crisis, then there is what we call internal security situations in the country, um, the operations that culminated into a civil war. And we were able to go through all these problems and survived it. So I think I must say that we have done very well as a, as a nation. How do we work as a nation? Every one of us puts a hand on deck to ensure that we do the right thing. How we done our citizens' duty? How we obeyed the Lord of the country? How we paid our tax. According to the elder statement, the strength of the country is in her number. Thus, it remains better to be united and called on political leaders to remain resolute towards the cause. We have still been able to remain a one united country, and I pray that we will remain one indivisible country. Nigeria is being seen as we are today 
the biggest black nation in the world. And I believe this way we can make impact in world politics. General Ibrahim Babangidan and his counterpart both hope for a developed country and call on all to give peace a chance while encouraging politicians in government and the opposition to see themselves as partners in progress to fast track reaching the peak of the country's potentials. In Mina, I am Fatima Usman, NTA News. Foreign policy experts have called for dynamism in Nigeria's engagement with other countries to enable her to maintain its integrity and relevance. Butwa Mila reports that the experts met the plea while discussing Afrocentric foreign policy. How beneficial to Nigeria at 60 on Good Morning Nigeria. Independence. Nigerian's foreign policy had centered on Africa, which made it a pan-African concept. From cornerstone to concentric circle, people diplomacy and economic diplomacy, Nigeria's foreign policy focused on solidarity, decolonization, apartheid, and above all, dedication to African unity in the last 60 years. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria have divergent views on the consistency or otherwise of Nigeria's foreign policy, but emphasize dynamism and radicalism in Nigeria's engagements with other nations. They argued that Nigeria had in the last 60 years contributed a lot to the development of African countries, but had not got much in return. From the own side, say that you, know, you do not frame your foreign policy on the basis of give and take, on the basis of returns, particularly material returns. Thereby, whoever frames the foreign policy of a country will first and foremost have the objective in his front before him or before her. Ambassador Saki is saying foreign policy is not meant, um, it's not a question of um, giving and taking. He's, he's right, only to a very limited extent. Let's put the record straight, first of all. The guest also said precision is needed for the Nigerian foreign policy to take shape in the country. When you put so many hands in the pie, you spoil the pie. Look at foreign ministry, you know, struggling to do this work. Why can't you allow the experts? So that when we fail, we take the responsibility. Your respectability in international relations is not dependent on your past benevolence. It is a function of the leverages you can bring at the table at any point in time. Professor Bola Akinterewa advocated Nigeria first in the Nigerian foreign policy going forward. In Abuja, Butu Miller, NTA News. The federal government has declared Thursday, October 1, as a public holiday to mark the nation's 60th independence anniversary celebration. The Minister of Interior, Ralph Arek Bishala, who made the declaration on behalf of the federal government, congratulates all Nigerians on the celebration of the country's Diamond Jubilee and assures of government's unwavering commitment to the social economic transformation of the country. He therefore called on all Nigerians to join hands with the federal government in its quest to ensure a better Nigeria for all citizens, both at home and abroad. You're watching Nationwide on NCA. Port Harcourt is our first port of call and Jenny will be our guide. Hello, Jenny. Thank you, Elizabeth. In keeping with the tradition of one of the hallmarks of Nigeria's independence, President Muhammad Buhari unveils the nation's 60th logo and theme. Correspondent on special assignment reports on the significance of the theme. Together we shall be. In 1960, history was made as the Union flag was lowered and was replaced by the Nigerian flag, signaling the formal handing over of power to a new and independent nation. The ceremony brought together Nigerians who ignored ethnic divide to celebrate the birth of a new nation. In keeping with the age-long tradition, President Muhammadu Buhari unveils the logo and theme for the 60th independence anniversary celebration where he assures Nigerians that the federal government under his watch will consolidate on the gains of past heroes. Our founding fathers, in spite of the differences in faith, tribe, and tongue, came together to fight for Nigeria's independence. This shall be a fitting tribute to the struggles 
of our hero's past. The theme, Together We Shall Be, Nigerians say it is apt as it recognizes the sojourn in the nationhood, identify challenges and what it requires to move Nigeria to its enviable stage among the Committee of Nations. There is uh, nothing wrong actually with us being together for these 60 years, but there are some inherent uh, vices we have to eschew, like greed, avarice and nepotism, ethnicity and the rest. We should embrace character reformation so that we can have it changed. I'm trying to talk about how we different tribes can come together in unison, can come together as one love. No matter where you come from, Ibu, Eowusa and Yoruba, we are to come together and love one another. The logo, which was a choice from Nigerians of all walks of life, depicts togetherness. The 60th independence anniversary celebration will be observed for a whole year, ending on September 30th, 2021. The Nigerian army has assured international investors of maritime security within the nation's territorial waters. Flag Officer Commanding Eastern Naval Command, Rear Admiral David Adeniron, gave the assurance after six warships and 60 gunboats successfully completed Exercise Sangasong along the Gulf of Guinea. Kingsley Amajuri reports. Oil theft, illegal oil bunkering, kidnapping, sea robbery and piracy are among key security threats in the maritime sector. This exercise is intended to counter these threats, provide enhanced security, and restore investor confidence in Nigeria's waterways. The Eastern Naval Command also used the platform to assess the operational readiness of its fleet, evaluate personnel skills and capacity towards responding to maritime threats, while also retraining the participating naval personnel. We have to reassure our trading partners, that's Nigeria's trading partners, that our waters is safe. Participants were trained on sea navigation, search and rescue operation, equipment handling, medical evacuation, among others. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. A nationwide will continue with Elizabeth after the break. Who applied for admission into Ahmad Dubello University NTA TV College degree program in mass communication for 2020 2021 academic session are invited to a post UTME and direct entry screening exercise scheduled as follows date 15th to 17th October 2020. Venue NTA TV College premises revealed JAWS time 9 a.m. daily screening fee 2000 naira paid through the remitter platform in any commercial bank in favor of NTA TV College JAWS. Eligible candidates are those who indicated NTA TV College as their first choice and scored 180 and above in the 2020 UTME examination. Candidates are expected to come along with the originals of their O level certificates, jam slips, birth certificates, indigenship certificate, and proof of payment. Direct entry candidates are expected to come along with their original diploma certificates, A-level results in addition to the other credentials mentioned above. Shortlisted candidates without O-level results will not be cleared by JAMP. Therefore, all candidates are advised to visit any JAMP office or accredited CBT center nearest to them to upload their O-level results. Wearing a face mask is compulsory for admittance into the college premises, in addition to strict observance of other COVID-19 safety protocols. Announcer, Registrar. <music> Nigeria at 60 and a journey to nationhood. What are the developmental strides, economic and socio-political growth? All these on Tuesday Alive this week as Nigeria marks 60 years of independence. Tuesday Alive and Nigeria's milestones. It is going to be incisive and educative. Join us on Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. Don't miss it. A 24-hour news station brings to you news and happenings seven days a week. News at 10 a.m., news update at 11 and 1 p.m., news desk at 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., and late evening news at 11 p.m. Follow us on any of our platforms and keep abreast of events and current affairs within and outside our shores. We are on DSTV Channel 419, Bo TV Channel 46, 
Star Times Channel 101 and Free TV Channel 703. Join us. A new edition of TV Guide is out, featuring great personalities from all walks of life. Expository interview with a young TV presenter who shows passion on what she does, Morayo Afolabi Brown of TVC. Pick a copy of this compendium of mind-blowing stories and get abreast with issues as regards media convergence, leadership, health, star profiles, star programs, fashion, sports, human angle stories, and lots more. Meet some media professionals within our space who have paid their dues in no small ways. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative, and compelling. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or NTA stations nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. Thanks for staying with the NTA. People of Hadija Emirate in Jigawa State continue to live in fear as flood destroys thousands of hectares of farmlands in residential areas. Mansur Aliu Hassan reports that the flood may not be unconnected with the overflow of River Hadija following the release of water from bigger dams in neighboring states. <laughs> no fewer than 25 people have been confirmed killed, thousands rendered homeless, while many others are taking refuge in various public and private places. Due to incessant flooding, since the rain started this year in Hadija local government area of Jigawa State. This nature's gift of rains is now a disaster to the Hadija community and its environs, as it destroys structure, kills many lives and washed away thousands of hectares of farmlands. Rescue efforts have since commenced by various youth in the affected areas, with a view to rescuing other communities from being ravaged by the flood. Public institutions such as schools were also not spared. Jagawa State Governor Muhammad Badaru Abubakar has since embarked on a sympathy visit to the affected communities, where he assured them of quick intervention. He further announced that while he awaits the report of the Flood Assessment Committee to submit its findings, Federal government has since commenced the construction of embankments around the valley to prevent further incidents. And also ecological support funding awaits the state, all in efforts to mitigate occurrence. While the state government has since commenced arrangements to relocate the affected communities. In Dusi, Mansur Ali Hassan, NTA News. And the federal government is accelerating actions towards the immediate takeoff of the Hydro Electric Power Areas Development Commission to address challenges of the river and communities along River Niger and its offshores. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, disclosed this while on a sympathy visit to victims of flood disaster in Kebi State. Nora Tanko Wakili reports. Traditional institutions are said to be closer to the people and therefore feel directly the impact of whatever affects them. It was in recognition of this that the Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami identified with these institutions in sympathizing with the people of Kebi State who suffered losses from the flood that ravaged parts of the state. The disaster in magnitude is indeed overwhelming and the federal government is doing what it takes. And on our own side of, um, of the support, Myself and indeed the Kadi Malami Foundation and uh, Kadi Mia for Development for Justice and uh, Development Initiative, which are foundations with which I am associated with, have indeed considered the possibility and the need to provide the desired support, and we have mobilized to see what support we can give, both in cash and in kind. The minister said in addition to relief assistance and reclaiming of damaged infrastructure, the federal government will adopt an institutional framework for store recurrence of flood and its impacts on the affected communities. Part of this, the minister said, is the result of President Muhammadu Buhari to ensure immediate take-off of hyperdeck. It is intended to be a commission to be put in place 
for the purpose of providing the necessary support in terms of research and associated developments to ensure at the end of the day that we do not experience this further unfortunate incidents in the future. The minister who visited 12 out of the 18 local government areas affected in the state also really assured of the federal government's commitment in tackling security challenges in the country. Amos of Gondo and Argungo as well as other traditional leaders thanked the minister for the visit and commended him for identifying with his people and supporting them to cushion the effect of the disaster. Nora Tonkuwakili, NT. Let's shift attention to food sufficiency. Prices of grains are gradually dropping in Sokoto State as new produce are coming to the markets. Show Mohammed Dati has a situation report. This marks a turning point for food price with new farm produce making their way to the markets. Harvest of grains has just commenced. And Elias Abubakar, a grains seller, said the prices are gradually declining. A comparative analysis shows that a bag of millet that was sold for 18,000 to 19,000 naira is now 14,000 to 15,000 naira a bag. Omar Shuni, a grains seller, said that a bag of maize that was sold at 19,000 to 20,000 naira is now 15,500 to 16,000 naira, while beans price remains unchanged for now. This is the same situation at the rice market where rice price in recent times had reached record high. Omar Bello Kalamena, chairman of Rice Sellers, said new produce could be purchased between 35,000 to 37,000 naira a bag as against 45,000 naira. Meanwhile, some farmers in the state are still counting their losses as storage share rains have submerged farmlands across the state. In Sakwato, Show Hamadeti and TMS. Now, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has dissociated itself from a trending report in the media titled 2.72 billion naira for school feeding during lockdown diverted to private accounts. A statement by the Special Assistant to the Minister on Media, Neka and Kim Anibese, says the report emanated from a presentation by the chairman of ICPC at the Second National Summit on diminishing corruption in Abuja, which was twisted and misinterpreted by mischief makers. The minister hereby informs the public that the Federal Government College's school feeding in question is different from the homegrown school feeding, which is one of its social investment programs, adding that the school feeding under scrutiny is feeding of students in federal government colleges across the country and is not under the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, which only oversees homegrown school feeding for children in primary one to three in select pub selected public schools across the country. The ministry describes those casting aspersions on the minister Sadia Omar Farouk as malicious and unfair and calls on the ICBC to publish the names of persons, federal colleges and schools heads whose names have been found to be associated with the missing funds and for the calls on the general public to disregard the false reports. Vice President Yemi Oshimba just called on Nigerians to key into the government whistleblower policy by providing useful information to relevant authorities to help combat corrupt practices in the country. The Vice President made the call at a national conference on whistleblower policy organized by the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. In a sporting world, whistle is being blown to signal the beginning and the end of a game and when a foul play is dictated. But in this circumstance, it is a different ball game as it is all about dictating financial foul play. The conference is to therefore discuss the implementation of the policy, challenges and the way forward. Vice President Oshie Banjo, who joined the conference virtually, urged the relevant agencies to leverage on the public window through tapping of information. Corruption is for the good of our nation. In a game, referees are protected, which makes it easier for them to operate. And this brings the question about the protection of the whistleblower. That because information is provided, the whistleblower is at risk. So this bill, when passed into law, will 
provide added protection for the whistleblower. The National Assembly has become conversant with my takes of corruption and is then able to put together a robust set of legal framework to criminalize all manifestations of graft in and out of government. Highlight of the event was the cutting of a cake to mark Nigeria's 60th independence anniversary. The Inspector General of Police has reaffirmed his commitment to the federal government's efforts at curbing fraud, enhancing transparency and accountability. The IGP made this known and cuts the call on him by the Auditor General of the Federation. The Kotsa visit was informed by the need for both institutions to foster mutual understanding for the purpose of promoting accountability and transparency, which are cornerstones for social economic development of any society. The Auditor General noted that proper auditing of police armory and other logistics will help to facilitate proper planning and budgeting at any point in time. The IGP assured of the readiness of the police and there is watch to cooperate with the force an office of the Auditor General in ensuring accountable and transparent processes in the management of equipment and resources of the force. We now take you to Joss where Felicia has the next set of reports on Nationwide. Hello, Felicia. Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome to Joss. Over 1,000 women in Plateau State have been trained in basic entrepreneurial procedures intended to sharpen their business skills for improved business productivity. Indian and Deaba Gang reports that the two-day capacity training is by the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs. It was an electrifying moment for the women who could not hide their excitement for the privilege of being trained in micro, small and medium enterprises towards improving their entrepreneurial skills and understanding various revenue streams and how to maintain their customers in the face of COVID-19. This has empowered me more to know how to manage my business. It will you know, actually help me to know how to manage myself, manage my family, manage my business. Before they begin to access these interventions from government, they know what is required of them as business people. For the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs, it is a strategic intervention to train over 3,000 women across the six geopolitical zones of the country. Training we do to empower them is train the trainer and we'll keep doing it. Once they are trained, they are given status pack to start their small scale in air businesses so that women can be able to uh, survive the adverse effects of COVID-19 on them. The Plateau State Government noted that women are on the threshold of being free. There's nothing that can be greater than helping the woman to help her family and help the nation. The women, amongst them, the fiscally challenged, were given financial assistance to support their businesses in jobs, in Denyan and their began NTA News. To stand the scourge of infant and young child malnutrition in Plateau State, support groups and caregivers were trained on best child feeding methods. The training is a collaboration between the Plateau State Primary Health Care Board and the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF. Alisa Botukai Andrew reports. Malnutrition is considered as one of the challenges confronting infant and young children in most states of the country especially in rural communities where access to balanced diet is insufficient. According to indicators, in Plateau State, the situation is stable but stunting and moderate acute malnutrition is on the rise. Therefore, these infant and young child feeding support groups are first line of intervention to prevent malnutrition. So what we are doing now is training the people that are going to go around the various local governments to also train people on how to educate the mothers on how to make sure these children get what they are supposed to get. Nigeria, there is a lot, a lot of nutritious food, but sometimes mothers do not have the ability to understand how to use the available, affordable and nutritious food. The groups will be equipped with knowledge and skills on proper feeding and in turn train caregivers in their host communities. At the end of these trainings, I will be able to go back to the LGA 
I stepped down the training to the NGO team because in the community there's need for for that to train them on inch, uh, infant and child feeding to prevent malnutrition. The first three groups from Shendam, Mangu, and just North local government areas will undergo three phases of training in just Elizabeth Kai Andrew, NTA News. Elizabeth, just is done. It's back to you for more on Nationwide. So much, Felicia. Let's now shift attention to communications in furtherance of developing the capacity of Nigerians to use technology to solve problems. The Minister of Communications and Digital Economy has launched the Digital Niger Portal and Mobile App, which it says will provide a platform to empower Nigerians to develop relevant skills and build innovative solutions to address challenges within the country. It will enable us to identify skilled Nigerians for additional capacity building opportunities and allow us to easily conduct surveys to identify causes of our interest. Students will receive certificate of completion after completing the courses. Step procedure for using the platforms will be made available on the ministry's website and social media pages. Now, a proposed biotechnology research centre is to be established in Calabar, Cross River State, an indigenous firm with foreign technical partners whose Calabar has chose Calabar as appropriate site for the project. Paul Abo reports that the concept of the project, which is based on clean energy, was presented to Governor Ben Ayadi. The biotechnology research centre is to create cleaner affordable and environment-friendly energy with carbon-free emissions. Some of the benefits and byproducts of the center include reduction of greenhouse gases, therapeutic drinks, good quality roots, improved soil content, laboratories, and adding to the pharmaceutical industry. We are very comfortable and happy to have you here, and we are very eager to allocate land. I just need a commitment that the handshake at the fullness of time will manifest into the project. We are also looking at bringing in the nano emulsification for technology project in the next two months. That should commence in June 2020. The establishment of the facility is in line with goals 1 to 11, 13 and 17 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. And now to education, University of Abuja will from this year's academic session begin railway engineering degree course to reciprocate China's gesture in Nigeria. Vice Chancellor of the University dropped the hint at the presentation of scholarship to 49 students of the university. Abdullah Musa Suleja reports. China and Nigeria share some things in common. While China is the most populous country in the world, Nigeria is its counterpart in Africa. As Nigeria marks her 60th independent anniversary on 1st October, China's 71st anniversary also falls on the same date. The 49 scholarships are part of China's continuous gesture in Nigeria's education sector. Celebrating October 1st together constitutes a unique bond between China and Nigeria. I wish to express my warmest congratulations to the 49 winners with the October 1st awards. And I hope you together with your peers to carry on china Nigeria friendship and become goodwill ambassadors of our two peoples. For the people of China, the embassy to have supported young people in this university like this, they are saying yes, they understand, and they are sincere in the way that they wanted the future of our young people to be brilliant. I want to thank you again. I want to assure you that this university will always be your partner. 26 of the beneficiaries are females, 7 postgraduates, and 42 undergraduates. Abdullah Musa Sleja, NTA News. You're still watching Nationwide on NTA. Time now to head to Lagos, where Adeola is standing by with some reports for us. Hello. Adiola. Hello, Elizabeth. 
Prudent management of government resources will promote transparency and accountability, thereby resulting in both human and infrastructural development. This was the crux of a message at a capacity building on Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007 for members of staff of the Nigerian Railway Corporation in Lagos. Abolade Salami reports. Since the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007 was signed into law and inaugurated in 2008 to ensure long-term macroeconomic stability and transparency in fiscal operations of the national economy, more than 1.8 trillion naira has been remitted into the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the federal government, with just about 5.8 billion naira of government investments covering personnel, overhead, and capital projects. In its quest to ensure that all agencies in the schedule of the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007 are sensitized to understand their role by the Act, members of the Nigerian Railway Corporation are taken through the rudiments and relevance of the Act. We believe that we should strengthen their ability on transparency, accountability, and prudent management of the fundings they must have received. With the COVID-19 pandemic that has slowed down performance of most economies in the world, Nigeria inclusive, stakeholders agreed nothing must be left to chance. The NRC appreciates the rich, rich cost content designed for our staff, which is very suitable as we undertake this era of railway modernization. We we'll definitely aid the expansion of our horizons and provide better understanding of these issues for our participants. The need for government agencies to at all times be transparent, they submitted, remains a panacea to achieving a corrupt free nation. In Lagos, Aboladi Salami, NTA News. Residents and commuters plying Victoria Island and Lekki Axis of Lagos State can now heave a sigh of relief as Governor Babajide Sonwolu formally inaugurated the Victoria Island Lekki Traffic Circulation Project in Victoria Island. Nosa Osula reports. Traffic is more pronounced in certain states, such as Lagos which is the economic hub of the country and having a population of over 20 million. Governor Babajide Songo Lu said, the most critical challenge experienced on a daily basis by residents along the axis is the heavy traffic volume and delivering the project has improved traffic flow, reduced travel time and eliminates perennial flooding issues, which is a boost for the health and social economic well-being of residents. The traffic situation was responsible for a significant reduction in productivity and it discourages growth in this highly commercial location. Governor Sonwolu added that despite the economic challenges occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic experienced worldwide in the last eight months, his administration remains fully committed to bringing economic prosperity to residents by developing and facilitating delivery of world-class infrastructure to serve as the critical development driver of a greater Lagos vision. Our strategy on the transportation and traffic management pillar on our team's agenda which, by the way, is the first pillar, was deliberately focused on infrastructure and innovative way to achieve a preconceived target and a reduction in travel time. The governor urged residents to take ownership of the infrastructure as the project remains a public infrastructure owned by all. Therefore, protecting them will further encourage governments to do more. In Lagos, Nosa, Osula, NTA News. Elizabeth. It's back to you because we're done from here. Thank you so much, Adeola. Now to the judiciary, stakeholders in the Nigerian juvenile justice system have called for better parental and family care as a way of stemming the fast increase in juvenile crime rates in the country. This came from a virtual interactive session of attorneys general and heads of courts in Nigeria. Femi Okewo has the story. 
together by the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation in conjunction with the Presidential Committee on Correctional Service Reforms with support from the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, the interaction is to help draw out ways of implementing amnesty and decongestion program for juveniles who have been deprived of their liberty both before and during the COVID-19 pandemic. Participants included chief judges and attorneys general of states across the country and international support agencies. And they all had various ways out of the present congestion of juveniles, most of whom are in custody in facilities meant for adults due to the near absence of juvenile remand homes across the country. To minimize violence against children by recognizing that childhood is the most formative period of a person's life and the time when individuals are most sensitive and strongly influenced. One of the major concerns of the committee during our visit to Bari State is the aspect of welfare for juvenile inmates. Central among their solutions are preventive steps such as good parenting along with family and societal care, which can keep the youth out of drugs and crime. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NTA News. Meanwhile, they ousted all Progressives Congress APC party chairman in Niger State, Jibrin Imam, and the treasurer Shafi Abdusalam have been granted bail by the Chief Magistrate Court, Warren Mina. Mukhtar Abubakar Wawo reports that the duo were granted bail in absentia, having spent five days in the correction of centre for allegedly embezzling more than 856 million naira belonging to the party. The Austate All Progressives Congress Party Chairman, Niger State, Jibrim Imam, and the treasurer, Shafi Abdusalam, were granted bail by the Chief Magistrate Nasur Azu in the sum of 5 million naira and two shorties, each a like sum. The ruling added that the shorties must be residents within the jurisdiction of the court and are to prove ownership of the property. The door, Jibrim Imam and Shafi Abdusalam were arraigned by the police on a three count charge of criminal conspiracy, criminal breach of trust, and criminal misappropriation of more than 856 million naira belonging to the All Progressives Congress APC. Two other hostage executives of the party in the state, Muhammad Liman and Muka Fasasi, secretary and welfare officer respectively, who are at large, were also joined in the false information report by the police. The case has been adjourned to the 5th of October for further mention from the state judiciary complex. Mukhtar Abubakarou, NTA News. And the All Progressives Congress Non-National Working Committee NEC members have joined the crusade of intra-party peace building among its supporters, particularly the founding members. This is to fast-track ongoing reconciliation as directed by the leader of the APC, President Mohamed Buhari, Salih Abdullahi, reports. Having secured a second term mandate to lead Nigeria for another term, the All Progressives Congress Integrity Group has agreed that sustaining the good work by the present administration requires genuine commitment and a formidable political platform like the APC. The consultative engagement by the group is a process of ongoing reconciliation as part of reforms within the APC. People that the entire members of this party trust us and give us mandate to lead at the National Executive Committee of this party to make sure that we are the fighting that need to be done and things that this our government has done right and the one that we feel we need to do more. APC stalwart and former Imo State Governor Senator Rochas Okorocha says Nigerians' choice of President Muhammadu Buhari is one for a better future for the youth majority of whom are being empowered with the creation of 100 million jobs targeted at them. For example, the anchor borrowers, where billions of naira has been released through the central bank, is all aimed at providing these 100 million jobs. And you have programs like the Special Public Works, which is currently ongoing, with over $67 billion, billion naira put down just to create jobs, linear jobs, for the use of this country. You have 
the new Ministry of Humanitarian Services Affairs set up all to also create jobs and palliative and solve the hunger problem. The APC group has been encouraged to focus on collective efforts to support the government to deliver the dividends of democracy instead of individual efforts for selfish gains. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Let's take our last break on Nationwide today. We'll be right back. effect of what corruption costs you. But what does corruption cost us all? Watch Bad Guys on NTA Network, 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. every Wednesday from the Akin Fadei Foundation. Bad Guys. Who are the bad guys? Join us. <laughs> Now to COVID-19 update, Niger Center for Disease Control has reported 136 new cases of COVID-19 in the country. The latest figures show that Lagos has the highest with 71, Rivers 23, and Plateau with 12. Others are Adamawa and Oyo states, six each, Kaduna five, Abia and the FCT, three new cases each, Katsina and Kwara states,